children of the night. What music they make. They're all gonna laugh at you. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Who are you? I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna bash you with this. Happy Advent, everybody! Woo! Welcome to Final Guys, the Advent edition. I'm Jack, and with me is Jason Brandt, a familiar face. What up? And an a rather unfamiliar face of Mr. Tim Meyer. Welcome back. I'm here. I'm alive. I, I survived the booster. Uh, we thought that you were missing, like Megan. Oh man, I my life has been weird the last month. The and funny thing busy. is, all the comments in the Titan episode were like, he's never coming back. <laughs> he, <laughs> he did not come back for a month. <laughs> yeah. No, I like it's just been it's just been a wild month. The, like holidays and you know, I did get the booster and had a weird reaction to it. So how long um, did that last? Like a week, man. I was like sick for a week. But yeah. I was probably one of the more extreme cases because a lot of people I know had it and they were like sick for a day and it went away so but. so you both you basically got covid without getting it You're sick yeah for kind of week. <laughs> yeah without but the, it, uh, it wasn't the really it wasn't like a bad like I, I had a high fever the first day um but like i just felt like just like sleepy and i like slept for a week <laughs> like that's really it but well oh well it i don't think i'd have noticed the difference then yeah pretty much <laughs> And that got me all scared. I'm signing up for my boosters. Like, no, don't be scared. I mean, like I said, I <laughs> like I said, I'm just probably one of the more extreme cases. But well, I'm glad you're back for this because I'm actually very interested to see what you thought of this because you left after a French movie and now you're back for. A I know. Movie. Oh. I'm I'm only on the podcast now if we're doing <laughs> French movies. That's uh -huh. my deal. I didn't even think about that. That is weird. <laughs> I will only review French movies going forward. <laughs> that is the way it will be. <sighs> All right. Well, um, before we get going, anything to announce before we uh, roll on? Uh, I was just telling you guys, my YouTube channel continues to uh, expand rapidly. So if you still have not watched So Bad It's Good, what the, what, what are you doing? <laughs> Go over and check it out. We're watching weird shit. Our Christmas special is going to be, uh, it's going to be something. And our next one is a Steven Seagal movie where he does not stand for <laughs> three quarters of it nine tenths of it probably it, he mostly sits it's kind of impressive uh so check it out and i also am finally starting to foray into hardcovers i've never actually produced them for my books before and so i uh i'm in the amazon i don't know i don't know if it's still in beta or not their hardcover program they're doing so i finally did one and it came out really nice like it's hmm. a it's good quality so I think, that seems like I think, a free book you could send me <laughs> yeah. these are definitely not as cheap as the paperbacks which weren't cheap to begin with but uh so i think i'm going to start putting my whole all my books all my oeuvre into a hardcover which is going to take a lot of work but they're nice quality so i might have to hit you up for some advice because like i i started looking into it i'm like hmm, this is going to be some work i don't know if i feel like doing it so I we can to, do that i might have to employ you to do that for me <laughs> I, I work for a beer. It oh, that's it? Beer. I, I can <laughs> afford that. Uh, yeah. Hook, hit me up. I'll figure something out. Excellent. All right. Well, uh, how about some drinking words for the for the old uh from the old you Mr. Sheridan? All right. Thank you, SB. Jack. If oh, I already got your drink. Very nice. If you say tiny calendar or Jesus, take a drink. Dr. Squatch. You say kill magic or friend. And if I say French wheelchair or box and the bonus words are shutter paralyzed and candy. Very All nice. right. All right. Well, let's go to everybody's favorite. The award-winning news segment. Oh, I was reading the comments. It's the news. Yay. It's the news yay brought to you by Forest of Shadows by Hunter Shea. <laughs> All right. 
I am scraping for news <laughs> this time of year. However, yeah. uh, Jason, you're the video game guy. Have you ever played The Last of Us? I actually have not. I have a copy. I just haven't gotten around to it. That I think I mentioned this last week when I was talking about the um, the, uh, the movie with the mushroom people. I think that came from this yeah, game. Yeah, you did mention that. Well, I, I from what I understand, The Last of Us is a zombie apocalypse kind of uh, mm-hmm. scenario. And uh, HBO Max is making a series out of this. And Pedro Pascal, he of the Mandalorian, is going to be the lead in it. And actually, the little girl from Game of Thrones who was like represented the North, she was like, you know, that little firehouse of a. Ch- oh, chick. yeah, yeah, yeah. She was the like, North does not forget. <laughs> she's like 10. Yeah. She's going to be the. I think her name is Bella Ramsey. I think she's going to be the main girl. How old would she be now? That was like a couple years ago. She's got to be mid-teens, late teens. Yeah, probably. I don't know. It's a young girl, and she's probably still a young girl. Uh, The reason I'm bringing this up is because they recently cast Nick Offerman to play somebody named Bill. Nick Offerman, if you don't know, is Ron Swanson from Parks and Rec, who Mm -hmm. I have a bobblehead doll of somewhere up back there. (laughs) So, So you're a fan. I'm suddenly very interested in this because I want to see what Ron Swanson's, you know, bring me all the bacon you have, all the bacon and eggs you have. <laughs> is your bobblehead collection? I have a sweet bobblehead collection, but they're, I don't really have them displayed in one place. They're all over the place. All right. Um, so neither of you have played this game? I have not. Always wanted to. I hear it's great, and I literally bought it to sit down one weekend and I don't remember what came up but never went to it. Any fans of uh Nick Offerman here? Yeah, I like I don't him. I don't know him from too much to be honest. Like I know who he is, but I haven't seen too much with him. Parks and Rec fine show. Recommend it. I do like Parks and Rec. Okay. Um if you are a um Blu-ray collector, which I know Tim you happen to be. I do. You might want to keep an eye out because two releases, one is out now and one is coming out, uh, I think, in February. American Werewolf in London has a new 4K release, Ultra H, 4K Ultra HD. I'm sure there's plenty of experts and all that. The reason I'm bringing this up is not only do I love that movie and I'd love to get my hands on this, but the extra for this is the elongated hand. So that would look pretty nice on your DVD shelf. Yeah. Yeah. For real. So if you guys are thinking of what to get me for Christmas, besides more books of free books, uh, that would be it. You know, I was sitting here thinking, what what am I going to send Jack for Christmas? Now that you said that, I think I got to figure it out. One of the funniest gifts I ever got for Christmas, Hunter got me, and it is like, I believe it, like Santa Claus getting crucified on a cross or something like that. It's like the most sacrilegious <laughs> thing imaginable. Oh, God. Definitely sounds like him. Yeah, it does. That really the, sounds awesome, though. The other one that's coming out in the 4K... Uh, UHD, uh, The Howling is going to be coming out. Uh, Can't it's, wait it's to see that animated year. love scene. In I know. <laughs> <laughs> it is uh, kind of cool that kind of the main two werewolf movies are hitting the shelves at the same time. Though I think we need a, a Howling 7 4K release is what we really Ooh. need, right, guys? Can you imagine? Dude, I, I would probably buy it just, just because. <laughs> It still chaps my ass that I spent so long tracking down a German DVD of that, and then it came out on Prime <laughs> like a month later. <laughs> well, the uh, same thing with um, Near Dark. I got that Japanese yeah. or whatever DVD, and I mean, like it's Shutter put it out day like, after I got it. Shutter, <laughs> Janine Pipe like t- texted me on uh, Twitter, like, "Hey, look what's coming on Shutter!" I'm like, "God damn it!" <laughs> yep, that's great. Yeah, I'd like to see both those in 4K. Actually, that'd be pretty sweet. Yeah, I think I have the American Werewolf in London. I do. I have it in like a regular DVD. So it's just one I haven't upgraded yet. So this is a good opportunity. 
I have a Blu-ray of it that I got because it was like on sale for a great price. Uh, the last piece of news is really not that big of news, but I saw it and it was, what the heck? Nobody's going to be surprised by this. Kyle Richards is uh, coming back to play Lindsay Wallace in the next Halloween Kills. And they've actually expanded her role in the in the movie. I feel like we knew that already. I wasn't sure that this was really big news, but I felt like we needed a third. Which thing. which <laughs> one was she? Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> She's the one who's like a real housewife now. She's the one who gets away. She was she was like helping the kids. Escape. Oh, OK. Dark hair. OK. She's, yeah. For some reason, I thought they'd already shot this movie until we saw the last one. It's crazy that the movie was delayed a whole year and they still haven't started shooting the third one. But Hold on. I'm just um, showing Laurel Hightower my bourbon. Oh. Metric. Very nice. All right. I know we're very excited about that, so let's move on to what we watched this week. <laughs> that's all the news that's fit to print. <laughs> have such sights to show you all right uh jason let's start with you what do you got for us i got slim pickings this week uh two things i just put on in the background that i've seen a ton but i love them so much but one i've been meaning to check out for a while now and i finally sat down and watched swallow you guys seen oh, this yeah. yet? yes i have seen it yep uh, this is not a horror movie. No. I, I thought it was going to be a horror movie. Um, and at the beginning in the first, I don't know, 15 minutes, I'm like, oh, this is going to be hard to watch. Like when she starts swallowing a pin, it's like, oh, like a push pin, no less, not even uh -huh. a safety. It's like, oh, oh, this is going to be a problem. And then from there on, it's not bad at all. It's just a, it's a drama with a woman who swallows shit to kind of deal with her anxiety and the stress in her life and a ton of really horrible shit she has to, to put up with and has happened to her. Uh, so it's actually a really good movie. Uh, the ending is kind of, kind of like kicks you in the gut out of nowhere. And it's like, good God, I don't know if I like that so much, but, uh, but the build up and just her kind of like, as you find out what's happened to her and why she's so, uh, anxious and is struggling and so weird. I mean, I didn't like any character in this movie, including the main one, but like you find out what her deal is as it goes. Uh, but I thought this was really good. It just was absolutely not what I expected, particularly the last half of the movie. I was just like, Oh, this is a drama. This isn't a thriller. This is just yeah. a drama, uh, but it's great. So if you're looking for something that isn't horror uh, and is definitely off the beaten path, this is a good one to check out. I think it's weird that I was seeing this on people's best horror of the year last year. So was I. I uh, guess like it's hard depending on how you look at it, but I kind of agree with you. I don't think it was really horror at all. It was just like a, a drama that had some dark elements to it. Yeah, it was dark for sure, but I I didn't really see any horror beyond, like I said, the first couple of minutes. I was like, oh, yeah, oh, no. <laughs> and then then you're good. If you can get through that, you won't have trouble with the rest of the movie. Dennis O'Hare is great in that. He's not in it for very long. He's only in it for like, I think like five minutes at the end of the movie. Mm -hmm. But he's he's great in everything, though. I would watch anything with him in it. He had a tough role to pull off, for sure. Yeah. But uh, good movie. Just not horror. <laughs> so take it <laughs> off your goddamn horror list. Sons of bitches. <laughs> All right, Tim. What, what do you oh. have to share today? So I don't have any movies or books to really talk about. Uh, it's like I said, it's, it's been a weird m last month. Uh, I've watched some stuff, but nothing I really want to talk about. Uh, so I figured I would just do a little show and tell uh, because today I took a road trip to Connecticut uh, and mm -hmm. I went to Bridgeport to visit the archive. Uh, you guys have never been to the archive, right? Nope. nope. I didn't even know what you were talking about. Okay, I, I, I don't live that, that far like, away, though. I, I that that surprises me, too, because like I feel like you you, Jack, would at least know what the archive is. I didn't. I knew. All right. So I'll chime in when you 
Tell so, us what it is. So the archive um, is basically, essentially, it's like a used record uh, slash movie, uh, Blu-rays, DVDs, um, and just weird horror stuff, essentially. Uh, and vinegar syndrome is kind of like their main headquarters so they carry like anything that vinegar syndrome puts out uh they also carry anything that like shout factory puts out um yeah like anything any like boutique like severed um just like any of those like boutique uh restoration things that put out like those old movies like they carry all that stuff and it's like but it it's owned by vinegar syndrome yeah, Vinegar Syndrome, it's like their headquarters, but they also have like old other other stuff too. And they also have like trade in stuff. So you can like bring stuff to trade in. Ooh. And um they have like you they have like walls and walls of just like used Blu-rays and DVDs and and uh, upstairs it's like three stories. So like up upstairs, I didn't even go upstairs because I don't have a record player, so like there's no point for me to go shopping for records uh but like upstairs is all records i think downstairs is like vhs tapes all vhs tapes if you're into that and um the middle level is like all uh blu-rays 4ks and dvds both new and used how big is this place it's pretty big man um like i said it's three stories and it's like it's a pretty lengthy lengthy place it's like the room when you first enter is like where all the new stuff is. And then there's like a back room where like all the used stuff is. And then it's like, you know, a floor above and a floor below. So it's pretty, pretty big. Um, and I spent a good two hours in there. So uh, just combing the place. So, so a couple um, of things. Uh, Hunter and I, every time we're at like Chiller hanging out at their booth, I look at him and I go, yeah, we got to go there. We should shoot like a monster man from there or something like that. But I never really thought about what town they were in. It's just sort of like one day when it's warm, he'll come over, we'll drive up. And like I said, I have family that lives the town over from there and whatever. Um, yeah. So, uh, but now that I know you love this place, like you just have, you have to come up like on a weekend or something. And yeah. Like we'll go, go, there's like awesome pizza. The, the best fried chicken in Connecticut is in Bridgeport. Like, so <laughs> we went to a, a taco place after that was like a couple of towns over. It was called Bar Taco. It was like, oh, yeah, the, they have those the all over the place. Best tacos like was, I've ever had. Is that had. Westport? It's, yeah, I think it was in Westport, actually. It's a fine um, Oh, you were right in my backyard, man. I know. That's crazy. Yeah, it was awesome. Like, it, it was like a, a bar. It was like a taco bar. It was, yeah, it was great. Good. You know who likes that's, that place? Tina. Oh, yeah. Actually, I have a deal with her. I, she comes up here. I'll take her to talk bar taco. It's uh, it was amazing, and I wish I could have spent two hours in there as well. Um, but anyway, there's, so I figured there's one in I, Stanford too. Ooh, uh, I figured I would I would break up. I bought eight films today, so I figured I'd break it up like four now and then four later when it comes back to me again. So uh, just to show off what I bought. Um, so I bought some new stuff and I bought some new stuff. Uh. First one is uh, a movie that I think I talked about the last time I was on the uh, the podcast, and that is Taurus Trap. I bought the uh, the Blu-ray oh, nice. of that. Very nice. Feel, felt like I needed to have it in my collection, so um, there it is. Uh, Dude, your potato cam is so bad right now. <laughs> potato cam? <laughs> it looks so bad. What is that? Just looks like your internet sucks right now. And actually, as uh, soon really? as I said that, it looks like it cleared up some. It's weird. Like my internet's been a little weird tonight. It's when you um, move. It's the uh, the bandwidth to handle your moving. It's I only when fine. you speak. <laughs> well, good. Uh, the next one is Black Swan. Oh, also I love that, that movie. used. Yeah, I love all Aronofsky's films. So Th- that's a the, dark movie. Very dark. Um, so the next two, I actually, I actually ordered from uh, Vinegar Syndrome from their website on black friday because they had a huge black friday deal but since that's where like you get the stuff fulfilled they hadn't shipped it yet i was just like can i just pick up my order and they're like yeah no problem so i uh i just picked up my black friday order and the first one is uh, a little movie called blood beat oh my god dude 
have you seen this blood beat the wisconsin (laughs) telekinetic samurai movie yes dude (laughs) i saw i saw like the trailer for this and i was like i need this movie in my life um basically (laughs) it's the, (laughs) the back reads um sarah and her boyfriend ted have decided to spend christmas with ted's mother at her home in rural Wisconsin. However, upon arriving, Sarah begins to feel a strange presence around her, and soon after, a mysterious figure garbed in a samurai outfit begins murdering the townsfolk, eventually setting his sights on Sarah, Ted, and his family. A supernatural slasher film like no other, uh, Bloodbeat applies an art house aesthetic to its American regional cinema stylings, resulting in a dreamy and haunting atmosphere to complement the bloodletting and outrageous twists. I cannot fucking wait to watch this movie. <laughs> That's it's, insane. We did a so bad it's good on that a couple years ago. Oh my god! I just uh, it looks like right up my alley. So. Did they did they push that to you to buy? No, it was just on. It was on special. It was like half off or something. Oh, so okay. I I was like, I was like, this looks interesting. There was like a, a samurai and a slasher, and I was, and then I just watched the trailer and I was like, oh yes, I need this movie. I definitely. We, we bought it from the vinegar syndrome guys at scares the care to, what two years ago now three or whatever it was uh we're like oh we need we're looking for so bad's good movies and he handed that to us and we we're like that sounds insane and it was yeah i can't wait man i'm very excited uh and then the last one the last part of my order uh is the new ticks uh 4k scan Ooh, Wait, i still have not seen this dude oh my god look at this oh i don't know if you can see that Oh, good Lord. Yeah, it looks awesome, right? And then uh, when you slide it out, it's got like the uh, old school cover that was on the poster. So, wow. I don't I love how it's the 4K scan and you're in like for, like 144p. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. My internet is having a, no, having a tough day. Fine. Hey, just having you here is enough. Well, thank you. So that's the first half of my haul. You guys are looking pixelated, too. So it's something weird's happening. The funny thing with the vinegar syndrome is Hunter always picks something up from them. And then every time I go to his house, he has like a little section, like the section of regret. Like we put, what was it? Uh, Demon Wind. He's oh, like, I like, love Demon Wind. Dude. I love Demon oh, Wind. Oh, it's hilarious. It's so... But he's got a whole bunch of stuff. He just buys things. And then it's like the regret, like, God damn it. I'm never going to watch this again. It just oh, goes I, in there. I, I don't regret anything I, I buy from them because he doesn't it's regret just... vinegar. I mean, um, Demon Wind, but yeah. there's other stuff. Other You've things on this. Yeah. Oh, they they release Whatever. pretty much anything they can get their hands on, I think. So there is some stuff on there that's like <laughs> Yeah. It's crazy. And like the, since it's, you know, their headquarters, they literally have like three massive bookshelves full of just all their stuff. So like I so, said yeah. before we started this, I thought that they were in um, Hartford, which is, you know, an hour and a half from me. Yeah. Bridgeport like I said, I'm going to be the town over from Bridgeport on Christmas. Like my sister lives the town over. So I'm there all the time. Guy I work with lives in Bridgeport. Like, you know, it's it's so accessible. I can go there after this and be home in time to go to bed for work tomorrow. Yeah. Like, so now that I know this, um, uh, I mean, I, I've all any expendable money that I have is just going to go. You'll love it, dude. You'll love going there. It's it's an amazing place. If I lived anywhere near that place, yeah, I would be goddamn broke. I already <laughs> spent so much money on vinegar syndrome shit. And some of their stuff is expensive too. Like like so, I think this text was going for like sixty bucks. So I bought it like Black Friday oh. special. It was only like thirty. So I was like, that's thirty is a reasonable for like a four K Blu Ray with all the specials and stuff and everything it comes with. So that's the only reason why I bought it. But yeah, sixty bucks I think is like the regular price of some of their their special yeah. editions. I mean, seriously, that's more than some of these movies cost to produce. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but we buy them, so yeah. somebody buys I, them, otherwise they wouldn't I love this shit. Them. I'd love to do their subscription. What is it, like a thousand dollars a year or something and then you get everything they release? Yeah. Oh, wow. I, I think my, my friend that I went with, um, he's like really hardcore into, uh, into them. He even just buys like, they're like, because they do a lot of they buy a lot of porn, put out porn, and he like buys all of that. And, like he's just so into him. He, I think he was subscribed to them for like a number of years. So it's just a lot of money. <laughs> it is a lot <laughs> of money. A lot of money. Does your porn friend live nearby, or does he get it shipped to him? 
<laughs> I think it's shit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god. Does this porn friend is his name rhyme with Bunter Bay? No. <laughs> it, it was actually you. I just didn't want to call you out on it. I'm telling you, it's my one stop shopping. <laughs> <laughs> um, they've got all the fetishes. All right, mm -hmm. Tim. I watched a movie that just hit Hulu that you happen to be at the world premiere of, I believe. It's a little oh, bit yeah? called We Need to Do Something. I was at that premiere, yeah, when it took place in, in New York City for Tribeca. So I, you know, I've been meaning to watch this for a while. And uh, like for recently, I believe it was like, it wasn't like for rental. It was like, I, I, my memory could be cl cloudy on this, but I thought like you could only buy it or something like that, but I could be wrong. No, it was a, I think it was a, a rental. It was through IFC um, put it out. So could have been, I don't know. But anyway, I, I was like, well, what should I watch it? I watch it. And I clicked on it and saw Hulu. I was like, oh, it's a sign. So I, I've been I've been really looking forward to watching this. Aussie, what the hell? Yeah. yeah. You know, um, just forget that you saw that. And then <laughs> okay. after the movie, you're going to see his name in the credits and be like, what? And then you'll you'll figure it out. I'm not going to okay. tell you. It's awesome. So yeah. this movie and uh, it's a family. There's it opens up and there's an, an ominous music that almost sounds like a warning whistle. And there's a storm coming, and this family holds up in the bathroom of their house. Storm hits. A tree blocks crashes through their house, blocks the door, and most of the rest of the movie is in this bathroom with you know a few other things. Um. And then, like, it's them trapped in the bathroom and something rather sinister outside trying to come in um, and wreaking havoc on them. And then a lot of it is between that and the dynamics being locked up with a father, wife, daughter, and son. There's a lot going on between, you know, the the baggage that this family has and being trapped and then the the powers that be that are outside dealing with it. Um, I really like this movie, Tim. I, I'm pretty sure I can't remember exactly. I was, so, I was really into the story of you being there. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's a kind of movie that doesn't answer all the questions that it raises. So oh, for sure, th there's going to be some people that are like, what? But for me, I, I dug it. Cause the whole time I'm like, what the hell is going on in this movie? And then like there's one truly like frightening scene in it that's awesome um and then there's there's other great parts but there's one part in particular that once you're like in a spoiler conversation with somebody that's going to be the first thing you guys you talk about um i i really liked it i it's i think it's one of the the better horror movies of the year so i'm i'm very happy that i saw it so like i said i don't think you know to each his own but for me i i enjoyed it that was a really fun watch Nice. I need to see this. Yeah. I uh, I also really, really enjoyed it. And it was really cool to see it at the premiere with like... So Tribeca was supposed to take place like in Manhattan uh, in an actual movie theater. But because of COVID, they actually, I guess, like broke it out all across New York City. And so we actually saw it in, uh, in Brooklyn in a park. It was outdoors. And they had like a huge like screen in the park. And... It was awesome. I got to sit. I get to sit in the front row. Uh, nice. so, oh. Yeah, it was kind of cool. Um, because after they they did a Q and A with like the cast, the whole cast was there, and the director and and everybody was there, and I got to like be like front row for that. So, so the, let's talk about the cast for a second. Sierra McCormick is the daughter who's sort of the lead. I think she's yes. in American Horror Story or something like that. She's been in a lot of stuff. Yeah, she was in that. She was in uh, VFW. Um, oh, was she? Yeah, she was one of the main characters in that. What else was she's she in? She... Great. Yeah, she's great in a lot of stuff. Vanessa Shaw, who is Hocus Pocus. Mm -hmm. And most recently I saw her in Ray Donovan. And when I was watching Ray Donovan, I was like, wait, is that the girl from Hocus Pocus? <laughs> and then the same thing this. I'm like, wait, is that the girl from Hocus Pocus? Um, Pat Healy. Oh, Pat Healy's great. Just <laughs> being the Pat Healy is of pat Hill, he's great yeah, in this movie too. he's like a he's like a steam uh a jesus i can't talk tonight a scene stealer in this movie like anytime he's on screen he just like 
dominates. Awesome. Yeah, he's good so, in everything. I love that guy. So I was um uh, I was looking forward to it, and you know, I was I was definitely happy with the uh with the final product. Like I said, it doesn't answer all the questions. So there's part of you that's gonna be like, wait, what? But I for me, uh, that's okay. I, I like the conversation, and I I uh I think some of the stuff that was going on is deeper than surface level. So I liked it. You you watch it and you tell me what you think out there in podcast land. So with that, yeah. what do you got? Uh I Tim, you mentioned a movie a couple of weeks ago now. And I wanted something to put on in the background so that you know if I don't pay attention to it for 10 minutes at a time, I've already seen the movie a bunch. But I hadn't seen this in a couple of years, and that is arachnophobia. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a perfect to revisit uh, it. background movie. It is. The problem is, I sometimes forget how good this movie actually is. <laughs> yeah. This is a really legitimately funny movie. The spider stuff is creepy, and the effects hold up super well, all the spider stuff. I guess because they didn't use any CG because of when it came out, but hmm. it it holds up super well. And uh, just anytime John Goodman shows up. Oh, dude. This, oh. Scene I stealer, mean, for sure. He's so goddamn funny in this. <laughs> Uh, Jeff Daniels does a great job. Just the shit he has to deal with moving to this small town and dealing with this uh, break out of spiders. But I forgot Julian Sands is in this. I the warlock himself. That. Yeah. And uh, Harley Jane Kozak, who I don't know if she even still acts, but I always loved her from. Um, oh, God. What's the necessary roughness? The football movie. I always thought. She was oh, great in that. yeah. Uh, oh, it looks like she still acts sporadically. I just haven't seen her in anything in a while. Very sporadically. Holy shit. Hmm. Um, so it's just just an outstanding cast. And there's so many character actors like Peter Jason who show up. And this is a goddamn good movie. Like mm -hmm. I put it on like I'll just throw it on the background and then it paying way too much attention to it. I'm like, yeah, I shouldn't pick this. I love they, that movie and I've seen it a million times. It would uh, make a, a great double feature with. It would. I've never seen ticks, so I need to. I need to get on that. You do, yeah. Uh, but if, if you have not seen Arachnophobia in a while, give it a revisit. Like it will probably surprise you how solid this movie is. They just nail the humor and they nail it. it's good shit. It's good shit. When I saw that movie, I had the same exact Miami Dolphins hat that the guy, the first guy who dies, had. <laughs> and my friend just looked at me and goes, This does not bode well for you. <laughs> uh, oh god. Good shit. I saw that in the theater. Oh, Lucky bastard. When that come out? 90? I didn't even see just now. Uh, I it was like 90. I don't even know. We'll go with 1990. I sure. think you're right. Uh, all right. So uh, movie hall part two. Um, first one is probably if this is I feel like this is an underrated movie um, and more people should watch it. And that is The Ninth Gate with dude John i Depp. love the night i think i have a blu-ray i've blu never seen it and it's on my to-do list for like the next month or two i picked it up it was like eight bucks or something for for a used copy so i was like i i think i threw away or it got ruined in transit for one of my moves uh like the actual dvd so i thought it was time for eight bucks you can't beat it it's a great great movie it really um, is johnny depp plays such a, a weird sleazy character in that He's so sleazy in it, but like just the movie itself is good. And I love like those like uh like those mis anything mysteries with books and stuff like and uh it's almost like a he's like a book detective and it's just like a really cool unique movie. And um I don't know, it's just it's just a neat movie. I like it. The fact that there's a horror movie made about a book detective dealing with like books that are supposed to raise the devil. The yeah. fact that that somehow got made and it's good is just great yeah is it anything like the library cop from seinfeld <laughs> <laughs> exactly the same exactly the same thing yeah uh yeah that movie's like two hours game. long isn't it it's long yeah. it's uh is it that long no dude it's 93 minutes is it the ninth gate yeah that's what it says on the back why do i always feel like time. it's long that's strange all right well i'm stupid <laughs> ignore me go on Tim. we do usually we usually do <laughs> Um, so my wife. An, 
<laughs> another movie I, I feel that uh, that's underrated, uh, kind of newer. I think it came out, what, 2014, 13, something like that. I don't know. Uh, Dark Skies. Oh, now you're in Hunter. Ever see it? The alien movie? Like in the summer? Kind of, yeah. Is that Carrie yes. Russell? Carrie Russell, yeah. I don't think I've ever actually seen the whole thing. Really good movie. Pretty solid and pretty creepy. Um, I totally recommend it if you haven't seen it. By the way, son of a bitch, The Ninth Gate is 133 minutes. Dude, That's why is two it say hours 93 minutes on the minutes. back? That's why Feature I was going to say. Feature runtime, 93 minutes. I'm not you lying got to like you. the edited vision. You, you got you the got edited the shit copy. <laughs> Bargain Can bin. You see this? Is this in 4K? This uh, <laughs> it's, picture. It's Dude, crystal that's in, clear. Blocks. It's in Braille. <laughs> I Can did. See I see it? that. It does say 93 minutes. There, you got the not minutes. You got the abridged version, like in the what bargain the basement. Is that why it was eight dollars, bro? Yeah, it's Maybe. like the LL Bean when they have the sweaters with like a red dot on them and stuff. <laughs> Maybe it's a misprint. Maybe it may. Maybe it's worth more now because it's it's a misprint. I thought I was I, losing whatever. my goddamn. Whatever. Idea. I feel like that's one of those ones. I I think it's on HBO Max or something. And I inevitably when I when I think of that movie, it's always like like nine thirty, ten o'clock at night, and I'm and on a work night, and I'm just like, uh, I need so I need like a half hour less of a movie. I can't. Um, so I want to know I, what your version is now, Tim. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm missing? really. I need I'm that version. Like, I think I might watch it tonight. I don't know because now it's got me. Uh, I'm kind of interested, and I'll like clock it, or I'll just throw it on and see what the runtime is. And I'm not. Gonna, I don't. I don't really care that much. It's fucking runtime. Uh, next one is a movie that I watched a couple of years ago during the Christmas season, uh, and I really liked it. It's a little weird, offbeat. I don't think a lot of people enjoy it as much as I do, uh, but that is Christmas Evil. Oh, I don't know that I've seen this. I feel oh, like my I God. You haven't. Dude, you have I have trouble it. remembering which one is which one with these Christmas horror movies. Oh, man. Yeah. This is probably my favorite Christmas. Is this the one that Joe Bob showed last year? Yeah, I think so. I think it was. on. Oh, Joe then Bob. I then I saw it. I'm pretty sure it was because the it was problem is Shutter. when we're all watching Joe Bob, I am like three sheets to the wind. So like two weeks later, I'm like, what the hell did we watch? <laughs> Um, so yeah, you have seen it then. Yeah, I think it was on Joe Bob one year. But uh, yeah, I love it. It's it's one of my favorite Christmas horror movies, and uh, I definitely want to go back and watch it. Nice. So pick that up, uh, and then the last one is probably my favorite purchase. It just came out, um, and Vinegar Syndrome did a really cool like box set version, um, and that is Censor. Ah, uh, good flick. Vinegar Great is doing stuff like this now. Yeah, look at that. Wow, it's very Damn. cool. And if uh, if you watch the film, you might get some of these references. But this is like the inside sleeve. Oh yeah! Wow, man, that's super impressive. It's really nice. Yeah. So, um, and then you get the actual DVD. So pretty cool uh blu-ray so yeah i'm uh, i'm super excited about it and it'll look great <sighs> on the shelf i gotta make a trip trip up there just to to go to this place spend all my money eat tacos the, uh, jack the drive up wasn't too bad it was like two and a half hours uh coming back it took us like four hours because we had it sent us through like new york and rush time rush hour traffic it was insane that sucks yeah but if you're in the area, definitely recommend checking them out. Nice. I need to go. You can also follow them on Instagram. They post like all like new stuff that they have. It's awesome. Or just send me what you need and I'll go make runs for us. There you go. How far away are you? I am about a half hour from there. My sister is probably 15 minutes from there. I do have like a list of shit I missed at the... Uh... <laughs> Black Friday sale. So if you are going up there sometime, I will send you some names. Did they ship like, your order yet? I didn't get or, anything. I had oh, you like, didn't get anything? I had like shit internet that whole weekend, so I didn't get anything. If there's no traffic, I can get there in 20 minutes 
it depends on where it is in Bridgeport. So call it a half hour. In traffic, it could take like friggin' hour to get there. So, um, hmm. let me know if you're going up there. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna go up now. I mean, over Christmas. I mean, I'm sure they're not going to be open when I'm up there for Christmas, but I'm up there all the time. So nice. All right. So uh, in 2020, Blumhouse did this thing with Hulu called In the Dark. And I think it was every month they put out a. It's a feature length um, thing like the, the the thing I watched was 90 minutes. So it was like watching a movie. Um, but it's not a movie. I I don't know that it's Blumhouse Television, but it so maybe it's a TV movie. I don't know. All right. Um, I'm gonna call it a movie though because it was a 90 minute thing. Then I watch a thing called Good Boy with Judy Greer. I have there not was heard a of this. Couple of these in the darks that like got critically acclaimed, and this was one of them. Hmm. And each month they picked a holiday to to do a, 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 a to use as a subject, and. <laughs> For this, um, when's Father's Day? June? Sure. <laughs> well, instead of doing, everybody thought when they got fa- June, they would do fa- Father's Day. No, they did Pet Appreciation Week. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, Judy Greer is, I think she's like 39 years old. She's um, kind of aware of her biological clock. She She's like dating and she's really... Th- wants to have a kid and can't find the right guy and frustrated with her job and with the dating scene and stuff like that. And she ends up getting this emotional support dog. And then it turns out that this emotional support dog, anybody who sort of stresses her out or adds stress to her life, it attacks them and kills them. So this is a horror comedy that rides on the awesome back of Judy Greer. She's so great in this movie. It is, you know, not a blood and guts hardcore horror movie. It's a funny, entertaining movie with a horror twist to it. Um, I I really enjoyed this. I've been putting off watching this for a long time. I just kind of forgot about it. Um, and I loved it. I, I thought it was a blast. And she is so great in it. Steve Gutenberg is in it, and he's great in it. Steve Gutenberg out of nowhere. Yeah. I didn't even know that guy was still acting. And he he's great in this. He's he's not just like a cameo or something like that. He's got he's uh he plays her boss. Um pleasant surprise because I didn't know what to expect <laughs> from this. I'd heard good things, but I was very happy with it. So and I, you just see like when Judy Greer is in a scene, it seems like you're watching somebody in real life. She talks, she, she reacts to people. Like it, she's very believable and she can be funny and then she can like be a little bit serious when she needs to be. It's a lot of fun. So I, I'm going to check out a couple of the other ones over the next couple of weeks. Dude, check out um, my favorite is I'm just fucking with you. Oh, I haven't heard of that one. I think I, I think I, uh, I talked about it on this podcast and I think I recommended it for like a mean feature, the, but the name of uh, ring rings a bell. It's uh, it's one of my favorite in that hole in the dark. There, there are some like genuine gems in that, and that's my favorite. Like it's uh, it's an April Fool's Day movie, and it's called "I'm Just Fucking with You." Yeah, I oh. think I remember you talking about that. Totally worth a watch if you have Hulu. Did you, you see Good Boy? No, I haven't seen Good Boy, so I'm kind of excited to check it out. You want to have your freaking mind blown? Check yeah, out Steve that's... Gutenberg's IMDb page. This dude is in all kinds of shit. Like, am I just not recognizing him? Or like, he's in he ballers? Just like, yeah, he's in eight episodes of ball. Like, what the hell? Guy, I had no work. clue. Dude's working his ass off. I thought he'd like retired in the 80s. Good for him. Good for him. He's the man. All right, Jason, what's up? Uh, I'm just going to quickly spread the love for a movie I've probably talked about on here times, but I threw it on in the background and I ended up watching too much of it. That is Big Trouble in Little China. Uh, this movie just talked is about freaking this movie perfect. It, uh, what'd you say? I was literally had like a, a 20 minute discussion about this movie today with my friend. About how awesome it is? Yep. There you go. 
If you haven't seen this, go watch it. It's goofy, which I think probably threw a lot of people off when they first saw it uh, because it's just, you know, a send up of 70s kung fu films. But uh, I think we just lost him. But his Internet was working so well. It's shocking. <laughs> he just had enough. You have to work, ease your way back into the show. Yeah, that's true. So I I won't talk about it again at length, but uh, this is probably my second favorite John Carpenter movie. It's that and The Thing. Um, I've probably watched The Thing more just because I go to it like every Halloween, but this is a close second. I have watched this movie so many goddamn times, and I still laugh at it each time. It is Chef's Kiss. And you're aware of the remake or reboot with the rock that they're working on i swear to god they can <laughs> why would you even do that this movie bombed horribly at the box office it's like a cult classic though now it is rightfully so it is amazing jack burton i still quote him all the time to my friends dude i love like the whole beginning of that movie where he's just driving talking into the cb <laughs> <laughs> I, I like when they're trying to explain the Chinese mysticism to him. He's always like, what? Huh? <laughs> like, he just does not get it. And then shit's happening. He's just yeah. super confused. It's such a fun movie. Like, it's one of those movies. This is what I was saying today is like that. If that movie comes on TV, I like cancel my plans just to finish watching it. I, so I should have known better than to put it on because then I just sit here and quote it the whole yeah. movie. So that's all I got. I'm done. Tim, you're all done, or you got anything? No, I'm good. I got one more. Uh, a lot of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies are on HBO Max, so for the first time in a really long time, I watched Nightmare on Elm Street for the Dream Master. That's your favorite, isn't it? So, Nightmare on Elm Street 3 yeah, okay. may be my favorite of all the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. I love Nightmare on Elm Street 1. Three is the Dream Warriors, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's what I was thinking so of. So one is like probably the best horror movie. Three is like the most entertaining one. And um, I love sure. it. That, that's where Freddy's just amazing and hilarious. And they really, they hit their, they peaked. So I remember seeing this in the theater, looking forward to, oh, you know, follow up to Dream Warriors. And I remember walking out of the theater pretty pissed off because number <laughs> one, the girl who, what's her name in this movie? Kristen, I guess, who was Roseanne, Ar or not Roseanne Arquette, um, Patricia Arquette. Mm, she gets, yeah, yeah. somebody else plays her character. Uh, and then um, the other two, Joey and Kincaid from the Dream Warriors, they get killed off at the beginning of the movie. So like all the Dream Warriors are killed off in the first act. That's right. And now it's a new group of kids that like, the Saved by the Bell high school. Um, and one girl's got like um, some kind of um, little trick that can possibly beat Freddy. Uh, and so I really, I have not seen this movie in 15, 20 years. I don't know how long it's been. Because um, I was just, I saw it like in the theater, then maybe once or twice when it was on cable. Um, and I was just like, screw this. But I had the same reaction I had the last time. I just want to fast forward to the Freddy parts, watch the the humorous kill, you know, his glove going through the sand like a shark fin, and some other kills in it, and then just who cares about the characters and who cares about the plot? Just give me a couple of good Freddy kills. That's all it's good for. And it hadn't changed for me. It's the same exact. <laughs> I hate I hate the girl who takes the place of of uh, our cat and I'm, I'm still pissed off every time Kincaid just died. They bring Freddie back with a pissing dog. Like it's, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Doesn't it piss fire or something? Yeah, that's right. It kind of undoes everything from dream warriors in like 15 minutes. You're like, okay, that's well. right. Now I'm remembering this. Yeah. 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 I do like the bench press kill. Though, yes. When the, her arms break that that's a good. That's a good kill. Yeah. So there's some good kills in it. So you can make a good highlight reel from the Freddy parts in this and skip the rest. But I mean, a lot of these movies are, are you could say that for, but yeah. I'm going to go back and watch a couple of the other ones. Cause you know, it, it never, 
I have my reaction to all of them. It's going to be kind of the same. <laughs> Good luck. Cause it is all downhill from here. Yeah. <laughs> I like them, but that's just me. I like them all. Yeah, they're, they're not uh, the one. What, which is the one where he's using the Nintendo controller to move people around. It's like, Oh, that's a 3d one. I think. Uh, nah, I son. That's Freddy's dead. I think. That sounds right because that movie's terrible. <laughs> I'll watch it. Well, then you know, probably by March I'll have watched it. <laughs> All right, let's get to the main feature. It's about time. You like scary movies? Uh huh. What's your favorite scary movie? Uh, I don't know. You have to have a favorite. What comes to mind? Okay. Hulu. New release. Hulu, what do they call it? Hulu exclusive or that Hulu shutter shutter exclusive. I was like, where are you going with this? How the hell did I watch this? I've got too many damn platforms. (laughs) The advent calendar, French movie. We bring in our French consultant, Tim Meyer, French expert, me and Jason Brandt, our Catholic studies uh, consultant. All (laughs) things advent. (laughs) That's me. (laughs) <laughs> um i'm an expert at eating the chocolates that come out of the admin calendar that's that's my even the ones shaped like dicks i'm eating chocolate sure we talk uh so um tim what was this movie about uh god what is this movie about i watched it like three days ago and it's already kind of left my mind <laughs> uh it's about a woman who is a paraplegic and um, people are very mean to her because she's a paraplegic. And um, she is hanging out with her friend who takes a trip to Germany and brings her an advent calendar. And there's some instructions with this advent calendar that says, basically, once once you pop, you can't stop. And... Uh... <laughs> And uh, so it's she, the Pringles advent. It's the Pringles advent calendar, uh, and she does, of course, because if she didn't, then we wouldn't have a movie. And terrible things start happening to uh, the people, people around her. So um, that's basically the gist of the movie. That's it. Now, are um, have you ever done an advent calendar? Dude, I my parents were well. My mom mainly was huge on advent calendars uh, back in the day, and and Jack now that like our family is like very spread. He has like seven fucking advent calendars he has to do every morning. Yeah, like it's crazy, but he loves it because he eats all the chocolates and and now they now they make them with like toys and shit in them. It's crazy. You get stuff with yeah with toys. He's got an advent calendar that like you pop it open and and he gets like a little toy out of it. Huh. Yeah, it's neat. I never had one growing up. I, we did the rings when I was young. That you'd like tear a ring off every day till Christmas. Don't know about that. That's that's the poor Appalachia version of uh, <laughs> never, never heard of the rings before. No, mm-hmm. we would do like like rings tied together and uh, they're just made out of paper and you put it around the tree and then you just tear one off every day till the last it's, day. That's interesting. Stupid, a, maybe. <laughs> Boring. I'm Italian. But... We had different fishes every night for advent i'm kidding we never did anything for advent oh, my sister like... does <laughs> there's a thing there's a there's a the seven fishes thing at a like christmas eve kind of thing we don't do it but my grandparents in the bronx did um no i never did an advent calendar my sister did with her kids um so anyway um timmy what'd you think of the movie i'm re- really curious because uh, uh you're a French um, guy. yeah i uh I thought it was okay. Um, I thought it was it was an interesting movie. Like the prim- the setup for it is really cool. I liked that whole you know making a movie around an advent calendar uh, and making it suspenseful. And uh, you know, I I I enjoyed it. I liked it more than I didn't like it. Um, got like a little weird in like the the second half of the movie. It kind of took like some some turns that like I'm not sure I'm fully understood exactly what happened um but yeah other than that like I, it's enjoyable and for a shutter movie it's a it's a good holiday movie to throw on so 
Hmm. Cool. How about you, Jason? That, that's a good point. For a Shutter movie, if you're grading on the curve of I get this with my subscription, that helps. Uh, I liked this. I liked some of it a lot. Other parts, I was like, hmm, I don't know that I would have done that. Uh, the end was a little confusing at times for me. Uh, have at it, Sheridan. But otherwise, uh, you know, I liked it. I li- I'm with you. I liked it more than I didn't. Um, it was it was a decent movie. There was a lot to like. God, anytime there was CG, though. Whew. <laughs> Ooh, that did not do it any favors. But uh, some cool stuff in here. And... <laughs> Just the like the weird German stuff where like anytime there was something German, it was like horrific. <laughs> this, <laughs> I, I thought that was funny. So it was a decent movie. Yeah, I agree. I, I, uh, my friend at work who's into horror, um, we both were like, it's a pretty good movie. Like I, I enjoyed it. I was better than I thought it was going to be. And I actually thought it kind of, there was a couple of slow spots in it that I was like, oh, come on, come on. And then it would um, rescue itself. I really liked the, I thought the third act made it for me because it, it really kind of ramps up. Um, I am not a huge fan of Christmas horror movies in general. There's some pretty good ones, but it's not like I want a collection of like, oh, I can't wait to watch all the Christmas horror movies. There's a couple of good ones. Like and, werewolf movies. There's like a handful in the restaurant. Eh. Yeah. Um, but like I said, I th- thought that the, um, it really ramps up towards the end and, uh, because it did that, it gets a better grade for me. Whereas there was for a while there, I was like, all right, I need more. You, you had some cool stuff. I, there was actually kind of a nightmare on Elm street aspect to some of the, the, the days on the calendar and what would happen that I was enjoying. But then there was other times I was like, all right, maybe there's a little too much ex- exposition going on here. Um, but like I said, it, it, uh, it rescued itself. So I would give it a, I'd give it a, a positive review. I think it's a good one. So now we'll spend the rest of the show talking about the shit we didn't like. Exactly. <laughs> as, we all, as we always do. Uh, I yeah, thought it was going to be all candies in it. Yeah. And then it mostly was candy except for like a dick pill, a car, the car. and, a uh, what do they call about the, dick pill. The, the doll, uh, a voodoo doll. It's like a voodoo doll. <laughs> mm. But otherwise, it was all candy. So I that was strange. I thought it was, was going to be all candy. But I will say the car, I really did not like that scene. Like, you didn't I, like okay, that? No, oh, really? I thought like the dog chewing on it, that looked just terrible. It didn't look great. But didn't they like, didn't they do like quick cuts? Like it wasn't, yeah. you couldn't really see it. And it was like super like close up. So like you could. You could obviously tell that they didn't have the budget to, to do anything spectacular. I thought it was just going to be like the dog knocks the car off the table and the guy crashes. I thought like that would have just been easy. Instead, they did like the chewing thing. I was like, oh, this looks like shit. I didn't. I didn't have any major issue with it. That's just me, though. I was enjoying the movie most when they did stuff like that, even with the cheesy special effects. Uh, this whole this whole thing had like a Tales from the Dark Side budget bin kind of feel to it um but i you know as a horror fan there's a part of me that loves that kind of stuff so i was i was fine and like i said that was kind of the nightmare in elm street feel that was one of them yeah some of the Um, kills were definitely nightmare in elm street like michael clark liked this movie holy shit really believe yeah oh he loves (laughs) advent this is his time of year Lutsky's out here. See you, dude. See you, Lutsky. Uh, I loved the look of the demon. I thought that was a really cool... That a couple cool. times they put like CG smoke around him. I'm like, guys, just buy a goddamn fog machine. Yeah. Right. But, uh, <laughs> they're like they're like 50 bucks. Of all the stuff you can afford to do. <laughs> I know. Like, blow some smoke at his feet. Like, what the hell? If you could do it at a wedding reception, you should be able to do it in your movie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maybe they weren't allowed to have him in France or something. Yeah, who knows? But the the look of it, like almost like um like a demon working at a butcher shop or something. I don't know. I thought that was pretty pretty interesting. Yeah, it looked cool. Why do French people hate people in wheelchairs? Because anytime somebody 
learned she was in a wheelchair, they literally turned and just like walked away from her. They didn't say goodbye. They didn't say it. They just literally walked away. I felt so bad for her. Like, oh, man. I really liked at the very beginning when she's in the pool and yeah. the guy's hitting on her. And then he realizes she's in a wheelchair and he's just, you know, he's surprised. So he's trying to yeah. have a poker face and he can't do it. And I thought that that was kind of realistic. Except he doesn't say anything. He literally just walks away. Yeah. yeah. Like now you can tell later because he comes back into the picture that he like it was bothering him. So I liked that. But the first time I'm like, wait, you just walk. You don't even like, you don't even end your conversation. Like you just leave. And then there was a woman in the park who like ran up. She was sitting by a bench and is just like looking around, sees her in a wheelchair and then just leaves. <laughs> <laughs> She's not a leper. Like, look, what the hell? It was wild. Must have thought she had COVID. Probably. How about that um, advent calendar? Like, and her friend, like, I didn't ever really explain where she got it. Did she say where she got it? Um, um, I think she just said she got it at like a shop or something. Yeah, something or like a, like a yeah, fair festival. Like oh, fe yeah. she went to a festival or something there. And she stole it, she said. She, yeah, she stole it or something like that. Um, so does that mean she killed some poor bastard who didn't finish going through like, because didn't she get it on like day three or something? Day four? Oh, I didn't even think about that. So had some poor bastard like started going through it and she just took it. So now he's dead and screwed. Maybe she found his dead body and just picked it up. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, she was kind of a scumbag. So uh, she was a weird character. Like she would be so nice about like picking her up and taking her places. And but then as soon as she has a chance to bang some dude, she has no problem stealing that girl's date. Like, Terrible. Ugh, gross. Dick right. pills. I think it's time to just jump into the spoilers and yeah, sure. get out of this. Spoiler bell. Okay, we're going to spoil. The dick pill was like a real twist. I didn't see it coming. <laughs> she sees the pill. It has a dick on it, so she instantly puts it at her tit. I'm like, who is this woman? <laughs> <laughs> and that what what is done with that? The, um, the scene with the the magic Viagra was <laughs> uh, that's when I was like, okay, here we go. This was, uh, this that's, is, that's what got you going. It was hilarious. <laughs> so did she get banged to death? Is that what happened? I feel like that's what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've it heard. happens sometimes, you know, and I saw oh, this really? like a week ago. So that's what I heard. I don't know. Does, does she come in and her, the boy, the, the, the boyfriend's dead and she's okay. But then the demon gets her. I, I gotta tell you, this? I'm very confused about what happened in the third act. Partly because I wasn't paying attention 100%, but partly also because I think it really was like confusing. Like, there were some confusing things that happened. Well, yeah, I have questions too, but what what part are you talking about, Jack? When, when after the banging? With the, yeah, with the, with the banging. Isn't it that the guy dies and then she comes in all bloody and then the demon thing comes in? No, he, like, her? he like bangs her through the door and she's laying there bloody and he's standing there with like this perverted look on his face and then the demon like breaks his neck i think oh the demon breaks his neck i know yeah. the demon killed somebody yeah she's just naked on the floor dead so yeah, i hate that, when that happens yeah it's college was a wild time for you mm -hmm. apparently <laughs> <laughs> uh so i i thought That's i like christmas at hunter's house <laughs> <laughs> seems like it's every weekend it is <laughs> uh i thought i understood the story until at the very end when she was saying if I take, if I eat all the candy, everything just reverts back to how it was. I did not understand that. I thought if she ate all the candy, she would be able to walk, but she would have lost everyone close to her. But then at the end, they threw all that out the window and said, no, if she eats all the candy, it reverts back and everyone's alive and she's in the wheelchair. So I was like, what? Yeah, I was a little what? confused by that too. Why'd you make that so complicated? Mm. Yeah, the guy was explaining it and I'm just going... Mm, okay yeah i was yeah. like wait wait what i've misunderstood the entire movie i mean it wasn't like a huge thing but i was like i don't i did i wondered if maybe the subtitles were off or something could be could be subtitles can definitely shutter has had some iffy subtitles on there were sections stuff. where the subtitles weren't even going though yeah especially like anything written they weren't telling you what the, yeah. the writing said i did like, notice there, that there was i thought that scratching was on the scratch on the glass yeah oh I, yeah uh did we end up seeing what that was? 
that was a very dream warriors or elm street kind of thing where you saw it from the two perspectives i think it did show us very quickly in the subtitle because i rewound it and had to pause it because i literally couldn't read it fast enough uh to see what it was but yeah so it could have just been a problem with the subtitles and i just didn't understand the whole time and they were finally explaining it but it seemed a little convoluted at the end for no reason it was kind of cool though how you know at first she's kind of like trying to figure out what the hell this is and how does she feel about it but then like the idea of her being able to walk appeals to her yeah yeah i like that it was you know she can walk again and lose everything and feel guilty or you know go back the way it was i thought that's a cool idea i just thought like they added like too many steps at the end i was like well yeah. but i like that the uh the dumb jock guy is the one who figures it out <laughs> like <laughs> she's been living with this shit for a month this dude's been in the picture for like 45 minutes and he solves the problem <laughs> yeah there was it was uh there was sort of like how the hell do you know that <laughs> yeah he's like in a robe Runs out like that was that was pretty, and funny. they just throws the thing off. Like I'm sure this is the right answer, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like why did he even believe her? Because she was walking, I guess. I, I guess so. I guess, okay. man. I I couldn't make sense of it. Oh, uh, the don't dump it thing. This must be a phrase they use in France because they said it like ten times. And uh, I guess that just means don't throw it out. But the dump it thing, for some reason, that struck me as funny. <laughs> would you um, would you think of the um, the whole thing with the um, the painting and finding the guy and all that stuff? So the end kind of threw me th th for a loop. There, um, did he go through the whole thing and it saved his family, or it his family died while he was doing it? So he ate the last candy, which reset everything and brought it back. Is that what happened? Oh, when they flash forward, like no, they they find a no. painter who had it before them. Oh, yeah, you definitely weren't paying attention. I don't <laughs> I remember that, that part. <laughs> I there's like a, there. there was like a lot of parts you guys are mentioning that I don't remember at all. <laughs> That's not good because my memory's a little vague too. Um, I literally just watched it two days ago. I watched it on Friday. I watched it last night. Maybe that's why I'm doing all right. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Uh, what I, What did you think of the, the painter guy? I can't remember. I was asking you so I can remember. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, um, that was one I was a little confused by, and I wasn't sure if it, just the subtitles or I was stupid or all of the above. Oh. I will say a part that I loved was when the first guy that she fell in love with, he, he throws it in a river or something. Uh, mm -hmm. And then the demon thing comes out of the river and grabs them, which looked thought, great, except for the CG smoke. <laughs> I was like, this looks awesome. Oh, what the hell? But cool scene. Yeah, yeah. There that, was good. There was good shit in here. Very good. Are, are we fizzling out here? I feel like we're fizzling out. We got. I feel, I feel like Tim is just done. I want to talk about the ending. Let's, let's talk about the ending. Let's go. It like fast forward to like uh, a year or something, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a uh, there's like a guy carrying a kid or something. Yeah, clearly the next guy who was opening the advent calendar. Yeah, yeah, he got her phone. I thought that was a pretty cool ending, though. So I did what, too. Uh, her apartment was like abandoned, right? Yep. And the wheelchair was outside. Oh, I didn't see the wheelchair sitting outside. Was it? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it goes to her apartment. My friend said it today. He goes, he said that the wheelchair was outside. Like I said, I saw it on Friday. Uh, the thing I walked away from it was that it was ambiguous, that you weren't sure if she did it or not. Yeah, that's how I took it. Yeah. You just don't know. Which I thought was cool. But that's that cool. Either decision she made, she left her old life behind. Like she definitely just bounced. Either way. So, In my yeah. head, Canon, she kept her legs. I mean, that one that one guy got sacrificed, but otherwise everyone else was rapist guy of. got it. <laughs> um, you know, her father's at peace. She didn't like the stepmother. Uh, her father also knew a lot about this 
for a, a, you know a guy who doesn't know anything but also has dementia when he mm. had the lucid moment he seemed to know a lot about the advent calendar i just called that because magic yeah, yeah magic uh, I, candy that was kind of weird um but in my head i'm like ah she's keeping her legs she could she could live with that talk cuz well, again a foggy memory here the blonde girl was in the car with her when she when she had the accident. She yeah, she was the one right? driving. Yeah, yeah, so write that one off. Yeah, yeah, steals her guys. Yeah, you could deal without her. It was really the guy in the hospital. He was the one who got killed. That you'd be like, oh, I could take that one back maybe. But yeah, otherwise the hell with it. It's Everyone a else game. Yeah, it's grown. Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> the blonde um, who she stole the guy in the bar, like the. The girl in the wheelchair, she stole her date. And then that guy's like kind of in the movie again for a bit. She must be a demon in the sack because he's like, hey, I need you to bring your car over. We're throwing my friend's dead dog in. Uh, she killed the dog uh, in her apartment. And then she's going to go stay at a cabin with us. I hope you're cool with that. And he's like, yeah, well, yeah, whatever. That's fine. <laughs> so She must be doing things that I don't know about because he is all in. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I agree. Things I don't know about. <laughs> I mean, he, he just was in. He didn't. He didn't even question anything. Oh man, that's hilarious. Yeah, I this is this was okay. I'm a little confused, but again, I clearly missed some things. So <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed it. I like the, the 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 weirdness of it, the wackiness. The it it ramped up enough for me. So I but, would I, this holiday season. I would put it on if I were you. It's just so funny that like literally I watched this two days ago and like I'm forgetting so much stuff. And then you guys were like, oh, the dad has dementia. I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember that whole that was like a whole plot point that I just completely forgot about. Yeah, it was probably like the second or third biggest plot. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, and that was completely wiped until you guys uh, brought it back up. So this movie has no like holding power in my my brain. So I don't know if that's like a, a testament to how good it is. <laughs> Interesting. I got it all, but I'm I'm only a day away, so I liked it. It's a good it's a good shutter movie. It's worth a watch in this holiday season. Excellent. All right. Cool. So um hopefully we'll have a full crew next week and we'll figure out what we're gonna watch. But uh Tim, welcome back. And uh that's all Thank I got, you. everybody. I'm out done. there and we, we are, we're talking very slowly here. This yeah. is yeah. <laughs> let's get the hell out of here. I no, drove like I drove like eight hours today. I'm I'm burnt out <laughs> uh we have no idea for next week so i guess we'll just uh figure it out as we go now nope, watch twitter we'll let you know and until next time happy advent bye game over man